Number 77. Ethanol, which is C2H5OH, is produced industrially from ethylene, which is C2H4, by the following sequence of reactions. And then they give us two reactions that follow with each other. Now the question is saying, what volume of ethylene at STP is required to produce 1.000 metric ton, which is 1,000 kilograms, of ethanol if the overall yield of ethanol is 90.1%? Okay. So first thing is, we're asking about some stuff about ethylene. We want to find out the volume of ethylene, and they give us information about ethanol. When they give you information about two different compounds and they give you a balance equation, we got to use it. So what I'm going to do is, this is a mess. <laughs> so we could always just combine these two equations to get the, the overall balanced equation. Now, if I just added these two together, right, remember, things on opposite sides cancel out. So I see that I have a compound C2H5HSO4 on both sides, C2H5HSO4, and they cancel. Goodbye. So nobody cares about them. Anything else that I could cancel out? Yeah, this looks like another intermediate, C2H52SO4, C2H52SO4, and bye bye <laughs> Anything else? Ah, beautiful. The two H2SO4s, goodbye to that. <laughs> oh, we don't want to get rid of that one, this one. And now it looks like I can't get rid of anything else. So now just combine them. Everything that was on the reactant side stays on the reactant side, and everything on the product stays on the products. So in this case, we have three C2H4s, plus three H2Os, and this will yield three C2H5OHs. Now I do see something, once I write this down again, C5OH, C5, okay. Now I do see that each one has a three in front of them. Now we could keep it, but we could also simplify this. You always wanna get your balance equation to be the most simplified as possible. And if we just divide each one by three, because that's the common number between them, they would all be ones. And that makes the calculations a little bit more simpler. So now let's write down what we have. Now the question is asking for what volume of the ethylene? Remember the ethylene is a C2H4. So we're looking for this one. So we're looking for the volume, question mark. And we want to find the volume of ethylene at STP. Now remember, STP stands for standard temperature and pressure. The temperature at STP is always 273 Kelvin, and the pressure at STP is always 1 atm. So whenever they give you the letters STP, you know two more pieces of information. So we know that the temperature has to be at 273, and the pressure has to be 1 atm. Now, we are trying to find out this volume that is required to produce one metric ton, AKA a thousand kilograms of the ethanol, which is this. We like to use in metric units, so nobody cares that it's one metric ton. We, we care that it's 1000 kilograms. Now we want to produce this, and they're telling us that the overall yield of the ethanol is 90.1%. So this is going back to previous chapters. Remember when they gave us percent yield? So the percent yield here is 90.1. Okay. Now, since the question is asking for the volume of the C2H4, and I know two pieces of information from that, I'm going to try to find out a formula. Well, they want us to find the volume. I know the temp and the pressure and there's no sets, so I'm gonna use the ideal gas law, which is this one, PV equals NRT. Remember, when you're using this formula, the R is the ideal gas constant, right? And that's 0 0.0821. Some teachers or professors might want you to memorize uh, 8206, but in my eyes, the six raises the zero to a one, and the less numbers, the better. <laughs> so this is ATM times liter, divided by mole times Kelvin. These units you have to use for pressure, volume, moles, and temperature. So when you're plugging in for a pressure, it's gotta be an ATM. And thank goodness 
we have it in ATM. The volume is what we're trying to solve for. So if I try to solve for this, I need to know all the other four ones. Well, we have the pressure. Maybe I'll put that in black. We have the pressure. We have the R value. The temperature always is in Kelvin, and that we have, right? This was 273 Kelvin, so we have that. And now the only thing is that we need to find the N value. And remember, N is the moles. Now, in this case, it has to be specific. If you're solving for the volume of C2H4, that means that the moles has to be C2H4 as well, but they didn't give us the moles. So I need to find out what the moles of the C2H4 is. Well, how am I going to figure that out? Oh, that's why they gave us information from another you know, compound in the balanced equation. This is now regular stoichiometry. I'm basically going to use this information to go from C2H5OH to C2H4. But here's the thing. They're telling us that we want to produce 1,000 kilograms with the uh, percent yield of 90.1. But we're doing things on paper. This is what we actually want to produce. And notice how I said actually. This is the actual yield. But on paper, anything that we do on paper and all the math that we have to put on paper has to be a theoretical yield. But did they tell us that? No, they didn't. So we have to go and get the theoretical yield. Well, they gave us a percent yield. They gave us the actual. So I can find the theoretical yield. Remember, that formula is percent yield equals, and I'm just going to put this something over something times 100. It's always actual divided by theoretical. Theoretical. So they told us that our, that our percent yield was 90.1. So I'm going to use that number, 90.1. The actual amount that we're trying to get is 1,000. And I'm just going to solve for the theoretical yield. So I'll just label that as x. If you want to, divide by 100, right? This goes out of the way. Goodbye. 90.1 divided by 100 is just point 91, right? So the, the point will now be here, 0 0.901. And now we can just cross multiply. 0 0.901 x equals 1,000, so all we got to do is just divide by 0 0.901. And that's now my theoretical yield. So let's see. This number would now be 1,000 divided by 0 0.901. And since this is not the answer, we try not to round. Um, so maybe I'll say 1,100 and 9.9. Uh, and since this was in kilograms, right, the actual yield was in kilograms, the theoretical yield has to be in kilograms as well. Now, pause the video if you need this, but that's going bye-bye because we need more room for more math. So that's going away. And now we're ready to go. But remember, when we usually do converting, we like to usually start off with not kilograms, but grams. So how do I go from a kilogram value to a gram value? Well, that's easy. We just multiply by 1,000, right? You could do dimensional analysis, but we're, we're over that. So these are like some, you know, little tricks just to make the flow a little faster. So 1,109.9 times 1,000. I'm going to put this in scientific notation. So 11099 times 10 to the one, two, three, four, five, six. And I think that makes sense. One, two, three. Yep, that makes sense. Okay. So here we go. And let's see, where am I going to do this math? I'll do it over here. So the roadmap would be I have 1.1099 times 10 to the sixth, and that's grams of the C2 H5OH. But remember, why are we doing all this? Because we want to find the moles 
of the C2H4. But remember back in that chapter when we did do stoichiometry, we had to have both units in moles in order to use the balance equation to go from one compound to another. So I have to go from grams of the ethanol to moles of the ethanol. And then I can get the moles of C2H4. So let's go for it. 1.1099 times 10 to the 6th, and that's grams of C2H5OH. Dimensional analysis, we're just going to times by the ratio. Throw the unit that you don't want on the bottom. So that's grams of C2H5OH. And then the mole of C2H5OH goes up on the top. This is the periodic table. Mole to gram relationship of the same thing is the periodic table, PT. And that's always one mole. One mole equals whatever the mass is on the periodic table. So I have 2 times 12.01 plus a total of six hydrogens, so times 1.008, and then plus one oxygen, so that's a 16. 46.068. Cancel out the grams. I'm not at my uh, unit that I want, so I'm just going to keep going with it, times by the next ratio. Throw that unit on the bottom. Mole of C2H5OH, and this is now mole of C2H4. This is the periodic table. A mole to mole relationship of different compounds is, oh sorry, did I say periodic table? Balanced equation. Use your coefficients. But just like we said in the beginning, there was only one and one, right? We simplified these. So this number would be the same for every one mole of ethylene, one mole of ethanol. And now you have how many moles of CH4? So 1.1099 times 10 to the 6th divided by 46.068. And try not to round again because we're not at the, the answer. So this would be 2.40926 moles. Oh, and I have to do times 10 to the, times 10 to the, what is this? 1, 2, 3, 4. So times 10 to the 4th. I'm sorry that I'm kind of like all the way over here, but I'll put it on the other side in a little bit, C2H4. So now we have the moles. This is 2.40926 times 10 to the fourth moles. And now with that, pause the video if you need to, but this is going away. 2.40926 times 10 to the fourth. Beautiful. I'm going to get rid of it, unfortunately, but that's basically all that we needed. Now, I'm just going to give myself a little box because we're going to do the math now. Now, since I have the moles, I can go back and use this formula. PV equals NRT. P was 1 ATM. I'm solving for the V, which is X, equals the moles, which I just found, 2.40926 times 10 to the fourth. Oh, times the R value, 0 0.0821, and then the temperature was 273 Kelvin. Now, technically, we would just divide by 1 on both sides to get X by itself, but I can just basically erase this, right? This would be the same thing. We're solving for X. So X equals, let's do it, 2.40926 times 10 to the 4th, times 0 0.0821, times 273. Looking back to the question, I see that I have four sig figs here, but a three sig fig one here. So I need to use three sig figs if we cared about them. So this would be 5.40 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And... 5.40 times 10 to the 5th, and that's liters because the volume would be in liters because that's the R value for the volume, liters. And this would be of the ethylene, so C2H4. And there you go. That's how many liters we would need. A lot of liters. All right. So chemistry is cumulative, right? 
There's a lot of stuff that we have to know from before to get these questions right. But I know you guys got this, all right? So good luck on all your future tests and quizzes. I really hope this one helped. Keep studying hard. You guys got this. And I will be here every step of the way. So I will see you all in later lessons. Have an awesome day.